Welcome to the Happiness Minute. Our episode today is called Inside Your Gut, What the Gut Microbiome Is and How It Affects Health. In this episode, we'll lay the foundation by exploring what the gut microbiome is and why it's so crucial for our health. We'll discuss the latest research uncovering the links between the gut microbiome and conditions such as obesity, diabetes, autoimmune diseases, and even mood disorders like anxiety and depression. And to discuss this topic, we have Jill Bennett as our guest. Jill is a true testament to the power of transformation in pursuing one's passions. For many years, Jill worked in the demanding corporate sector, balancing long hours, commutes, and a delicate balance of work and family life. Yet amidst the hustle and bustle, she longed for something more meaningful. Her belief in the importance of holistic well-being fuels her passion for helping others make natural positive changes in their lives. From advocating for mindful consumption to nurturing multiple streams of income, Jill's diverse portfolio reflects her unwavering commitment to making a difference in the world. Hi, everyone. We're back and we have a special guest today. Uh, her name is Jill. Hi, Jill. Hi, Anna. Thank you for having me here today. <laughs> nice to see you. Um, yeah, so Jill, uh, tell me more about you and your business. Yeah, yeah. So I was um, uh, the third girl uh, born to a my mum and dad. My dad was in the Air Force, so we've lived. We lived, you know, in in lots of different places, including I was born in Cyprus, and my brother was born in Singapore. Um, and then when I was an adult, I was a civil service, a civil servant, and I used to travel around different government departments wherever they would give me promotion or give me a better job. So for my last probably thirteen years of my career, I was in the Foreign Office. And that was a great job. I used to travel the world. Mm -hmm. Um, I used to audit British embassies and high commissions all over the world. And because of that, because I didn't want to give that up, um, I delayed having children. So um, my husband was also working abroad. He's an ex-professional sportsman. And he used to do an event um, in the Philippines. He used to run an event in the Philippines. Yeah, and also one in Malaysia. And so we just kept putting it off. And in the end, it got to the stage where I was 37. And we thought, gosh, if we're ever going to have children, we mm-hmm. probably need to you know, get a move Good on. Now. So, yeah. so I had my first child when I was 38 and my second one when I was 42, mm-hmm. uh, which to some people listening will think that's very old. Um, well, I and think then- now it's getting later anyway, I think now. Yeah, yeah. I think it's quite, you know, I have no regrets whatsoever. You know, I'm in my 60s now um, and I've got two young adult children and they're fantastic kids. And I, you know, we just have lovely family life together. Um, but I, my job in the Foreign Office when I went back after having children wasn't as, wasn't as exciting because they kept trying to give me jobs that I didn't want to do. And it got to the stage when I was 50 that I walked away and um, didn't work for a couple of years and then got introduced to a company called Arbon. Now, mm-hmm. Arbon was a marketing company in health and wellness. And when, you know, I, my background was finance. I had a master's degree in management and audit. Mm-hmm. And I was like, why would I do that sort of job? That sort of job is for people who can't get another job. You know, mm-hmm. it, it's not for people like me with the qualifications I've got, which was all a bit too, you know, a bit too full of myself. But I looked into it. And I looked into the products and I absolutely loved Mm -hmm. them and just jumped in. And that was, oh my goodness, that was in December 2009, so a long time ago. What happened after that was I had um, health problems. I had chronic IBS. Mm -hmm. I was always bloated. I was always uncomfortable and, yeah, just, you know, thought you had to live with this. I'd seen doctors. Nobody really helped. And Arbonne started introducing nutritional products, mm-hmm. which I used 
and absolutely loved them and found that if I took their gut health protocol and yep. obviously watched, you know, some of the other factors that affect gut health, I gave up eating meat, you know, there were lots of things like that. Um, I, my gut was fine. You know, my gut just healed and, and seemed much better. And I'm absolutely fine now and I've never looked back. So I realized that, you know, we're living in a fast paced, technology driven world. Mm -hmm. and we are. We are, aren't we? And the pursuit of holistic health has become a bit of a necessity. It's not really a trend anymore. No, it's um, not. Our, it's part of life uh, now. <laughs> It's, yeah, that's right. And, and you know, if you talk to doctors, so we have several doctors who join Arbonne. And if you talk to them and you ask them about their training to become a doctor, they have um, six, six years of medical school. They have two years as a junior mm -hmm. doctor. And in that eight years of training, they get no training on nutrition or the gut microbiome, which is shocking to think of. Yeah. And I think like, and then it's good Thing because like today we're talking about the gut microbiome and what it is and a lot of people don't know um that's right and they don't realize how serious it is so so now i help busy professionals business owners high achievers i can help them to get dewy glowing skin to look younger for longer have more energy have better sleep and just, you know, give them that feeling, that health, so they can do their job more clearly, they can focus better, but they can also feel healthy and happy. Because feeling healthy and happy is ultimately what we all want in life. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's achievable to everyone. So you mentioned something about, you know, at the moment in terms of um, health trends, is there any stats or findings that, you, that that's out there at the moment talking about um gut health and all this um things yeah there's so much i mean just to tell you some of the biggest concerns today we'll have all read things about anxiety and depression yeah 50... it's quite a big chunk apparently a lot of people are having it now yeah 51 percent of adults are now claiming they have just depression 61 percent report wow. feeling anxious and of those that experience stress, 16% have self-harmed. And 32 Wow, it's quite high. It's really high. 32% have experienced suicidal thoughts, which is, you know, very scary. Sleep issues is another one. Poor sleep is a major issue, especially in the UK. And Nuffield Health said last year in 2023 that on average, the Brits get about 5.91 hours of sleep a night. And that's down. less than seven hours, less than eight hours. <laughs> yeah, less than eight hours. And that's down from, well, less than six hours. That's down from 6.11 in 2022. And only 36% of those people say that the sleep they're getting is good. Mm -hmm. There's also a huge rise in diagnoses of ADHD. Um, the ADHD Foundation has reported an increase by 400% of adult referrals. And the number of patient, patients being prescribed medication for ADHD has gone up from just under 106,000 to well over, in fact, close to 191,000. That's an 80% leap in the number of people taking medication. So ADHD is attention deficit, what, what, what? Attention. Um, um, attention deficit something disorder, isn't it? Yeah, but what yeah. We, that that one, but people, people, that's quite high. <laughs> Just sudden, high sudden sleep. increase, and, and it's incredible that it's adults now referring themselves to get tested. Um, but you know, in some cases, you can't help but think. Actually, I think if you looked at some other health factors, I mean, even with kids with ADHD, there's been research undertaken where if you get them eating a, a very good plant based diet. Um, mm -hmm. And you get them to meditate, which can take weeks before they can even meditate for a few minutes. But there's huge, huge changes in the behavior of these children. Um, the health and wellness market in 2022 was worth 5,243.3 billion. Wow. And it's, <laughs> like a lot. Yeah. it's a huge number, isn't it? And it's predicted that by 2032, so 10 years later, it will be worth... 
billion. <laughs> I, I think so, it would be more. Because, you know, there's a lot of population as well and more people live longer. So the potential. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think the sailing the National Health Service makes people seek help outside. Outside, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So do you think, you know, I know we were, we were talking about the gut microbiome. Do you think it uh, affects also the health um, oh, of gosh. people and, and, and help prevent all of these things that you mentioned? Yeah, yeah. It, what happens inside the gut microbiome, inside the gut, the gut breaks down the foods that you eat and it okay. absorbs the nutrients to support your body's functions. And you need a diverse range of bacteria in your gut for this process to happen. Um, mm -hmm. But you have a range of good and bad bacteria mm -hmm. in your gut. And if you don't have a lifestyle that supports your microbiome, the bad bacteria are the ones that are going to keep um, multiplying and they're gonna outweigh the good. And if you can get the right balance of microbiome, the good and the bad guts, um, the good and the bad bacteria, you it, it plays a key role in modulating your immunity, weight gain or loss, energy balance, obesity, and obesity-related disorders. Don't forget that obesity is linked to heart disease, to cancers, to type 2 diabetes. Diabetes, yeah. You know, so many things. If I just tell you about menopause, um, oh, yes, yes. so many people suffer a lot with menopausal symptoms, and I didn't have any because I was living a healthy lifestyle. And I'm not perfect, Anna, please. I'm not perfect mm -hmm. by any mm -hmm. stretch of the imagination. I like to have a drink. Yes, um, of course. <laughs> I try enjoy, and enjoy, enjoy as well. <laughs> I like to enjoy life, yeah. And I think it's important we enjoy life. But I am 66 now, I've gone through the menopause, I've come out the other side, and honestly, I had no symptoms. I was absolutely fine. Um, never needed HRT or anything else. It, it's And it's all linked to the microbiome. And more and more research is coming out now to show that if you have a healthy microbiome, you really will find the menopause a lot easier to cope with. Your gut is your second brain and it's linked to our main brain by a gut brain access. Um, around 80% of your immune systems in the gut and the research, the ongoing research is now linking gut health to so many serious diseases. Yeah, you mentioned um, with the diseases, uh, you mentioned diabetes can cause diabetes, um, heart, because of course, if you gain weight, you've got heart disease. Uh, are there other ones besides that? Um, yeah, I mean, so many. We have eczema, rosacea. Ah, yes, yeah. <laughs> dermatitis. All of those skin-related issues, even if you just have dull-looking skin and your eyes aren't shining bright, it's going to be linked to what's going on inside you. You know, we we at Arbonne believe in healthy living from the inside out. Mm -hmm. We've already talked a little bit about depression and anxiety, but dementia and Alzheimer's, there is um, specific research that's showing that the gut microbiome is directly linked to the progression of of dementia and Alzheimer's, um, the gut microbiome can trigger metabolic pathways and inflammation known to contribute to dementia. And researchers are exploring treatment options for Alzheimer's that begin in the gut. Parkinson's disease, autoimmune wow. diseases like Hashimoto's that I have, um, Graves, rheumatoid arthritis, type one diabetes, lupus, multiple sclerosis, all these things which are being caused, autoimmune will normally be caused by a leaky gut, which I know we're going to talk about a bit later. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Allergies, obesity, um, type 2 diabetes, osteoarthritis, so, so many things that, you know, really can be affected by what's going on in your body. So I know we talked about the these diseases. So definitely the diet and the lifestyle choices that we make do affect it. So yeah. what do you think should we do in terms of our diet and our lifestyle cho choice so that you know it can help with our um, gut and health? Yeah. yeah. Everybody's gut microbiome is individual to them. And we have mm -hmm. trillions of bacteria and other microbes living in there. 
um, the importance to the gut of overall health is, is a topic of just increasing research in the medical community, which is great, but it's showing that our gut microbiome can affect every organ of your body. Mm -hmm. And everything from your lifestyle, so eating inflammatory foods like gluten, um, caffeine, sugar, alcohol, ultra-processed food, eating processed food, even processed meats like ham, bacon, sausages, sausage. yeah. are not good for you. They're really not good for your microbiome. Um, <laughs> um, dehydration, not keeping your body hydrated enough, using antibiotics. Um, antibiotics have a job to kill bacteria, but they can't distinguish between good and bad bacteria. Yeah. So if you take a course of antibiotics, which I would say avoid at all costs, obviously there is definitely a place for them and you must also always listen to your yeah. um, medical professional. But I, I avoid them like the plague. So much so that to my own detriment, because I had a um, root canal treatment last year, I had a broken tooth and I had to have root canal treatment. And the dentist said, I think you should take some antibiotics. And I said, no, I'm sorry, I'm not taking antibiotics. <laughs> Two weeks later, I had swollen face, really bad infection, and I had to take two different courses of very strong antibiotics. So I then had to work doubly, doubly um, to make sure I improved the state of my, my um, microbiome. Getting good sleep, um, your mindset, they're all really, really key. So do you really think good. exercise as well do do help um, meditation yeah. as well, right? Meditation oh, is quite gosh, good. Because yes. you mentioned about ADHD, then of course definitely meditation would help in you know all this reflective pro you know practices is actually quite good. Yeah. Um, yeah. as well. I think if you can start your day off every day, you know, avoid having things like um, toast and coffee for breakfast. I get up yeah. in the morning. <laughs> do a meditation, um, do some positive affirmations, go for a walk in nature, get some exercise, even if it is that walk, if it's 20, 30 minute walk, mm. that's such a lovely way to start your day. Um, breakfast, you know, have something like a fermented food, kefir or a, a good quality plain yogurt, avoid uh, flavored yogurts because they're full of sugar yes it, yeah it has lots other of, stuff in there <laughs> yeah, yeah lots of fresh fruits you know ideally the lower sugar ones like berries um kiwis if, if anyone listening suffers from constipation have a kiwi every morning on an empty stomach ah, yeah. and i swear you will never suffer again <laughs> it's That's really sweet. Let me yeah. try that because the thing is like the, the problem with that is sometimes you don't get the kiwi available in the supermarkets here. I think it's timing as well, but hopefully the, yeah. I haven't seen it recently. So maybe it's just uh, seasonal or something. Maybe yeah, they get. should be now. I think they're they're pretty good at having them. Probably. Them, but they are really powerful little um little fruit. Um, what else could you do diet wise? I mean. You need to feed your microbiome and you also need to give your gut a rest. So it's mm -hmm. it's eliminating all those things I've mentioned, the inflammatory type foods, meat. You know, if you can possibly um, avoid your gluten, your caffeine, your red meat. Um, if you're going to eat meat, eat it less frequently and eat organic yeah. meat. But ideally, it's, I think it's all in moderation. I would say with all this, you can still eat them, but I think it's all in moderation and not too yeah. much. Yeah. Um, and also increase, you really need to increase your range of plant-based foods. Correct. So yeah. more variety, you, right? More variety. Yeah, of food. variety and, and cover all the spectrum of the rainbow. If you listen to Zoe podcasts, and I love Zoe, um, they just do the most amazing research and where some research, the, the cohort is very small. With Zoe, it's hundreds of thousands of people they're including in their research. And they say you should now be eating a range of at least 30 mm -hmm. different fruits and vegetables a week. Yeah. Yeah. And I always say people 10 a day and keep it. And it's so easy because we're including nuts and seeds, herbs and spices. Yeah. You know, wine. vegetable. Yeah, all the different vegetables, and we're so lucky to have so many around now. Mm. 
um, initial evidence is suggesting that intermittent fasting can actually benefit gut health um, and it will help increase the diversity of your microbiome. So um, I tend to do inter I tend to do intermittent fasting um, every now and again. It's just because sometimes you just feel you I feel like oh, it's just too much. I've eaten too much, and also you don't feel really hungry as well. So yeah. technically, like it, it helps as well because I can think in the morning. Yes. As well, so I I have more energy, um, yeah. so I tend to do it at least like one week a month. Um, yeah. But, you know, it's so easy to do it every day. If you try and make sure you finished eating by 7 p.m. at night. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I, I you think I finish at 6, so that, that's yeah. me. Even better. Even better. And then don't have your breakfast till 9 or 10 the next yeah. day. Had a brilliant window when you've given your microbiome a chance to rest. And there's a process, and I can't remember the name of the process, where the good bacteria... Yeah. When is they're not getting or something, I can't remember now. Is it ketosis or something? I don't know. Well, there is know. ketosis. Yeah, you, yeah. That's then when you do start eating, you just don't eat carbs. Mm -hmm. You need to make sure you're not eating carbs to to go into ketosis properly. But no, it's something like a trophy or a trophy. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. I think so. the good bacteria are actually gobbling up and eating the bad bacteria because you haven't given them any other food to eat. And that's a, a brilliant way of getting rid of some of the bad bacteria in your, in your gut. Mm. Um, yeah. Cause yeah. I, I feel, I feel sluggish if I eat like, and then suddenly I eat again, like, you know, if it's late at night that you eat and then you eat at eight o'clock in the morning, I feel really sluggish during the day. So um, to yeah. me, like intermittent fasting is quite helpful. Um, yeah. so like if I, especially if I had got like a full day, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do that. So I'll start, I'll stop eating at six and then, you know, maybe start my breakfast around nine or 10. Um, yeah. cause I don't feel, I don't feel, you know, hungry, which is weird because no. you would think, oh, you feel hungry. No, no, actually. No. Um, and you know, a lot of people who feel very, very hungry, they're, they're feeling hungry because they're not feeding their body properly. If you eat a lot of junk food, you will crave more junk food. Junk food is full of sugar and unhealthy fats, to, to name just two of the things. And if you look at a brain scan when someone's eating sugar, it, it affects the brain more than taking cocaine does. It oh, lights up, all the, yeah, it lights up all the pleasure zones of your brain. So sugar really is a big no-no, it's a big evil. And if you're going to have any, make sure it's in fruit or yeah, you know fruit, something yeah. healthy. Yeah, yeah. Um, you mentioned something about um, you know, variety. So, do you think um, also, you know, like the genetic element or genetic factors affect our individual gut biome variety? Do you think it's it's also to do with genetics? It is a little bit, but for me, the jury's still out on this one. I mean, it's clear, I guess, that your initial gut health will be based on your mother's at birth. So, mm -hmm. you know, we know that yeah. children who are born naturally, um, they get an awful lot of goodness, even from the birth canal. There's a lot of bacteria in the birth canal that newborn babies have, and it's a really it's really good for them. So if you're born by cesarean or you know whatever, it's not as healthy for the baby as it is going through a natural birth. But if you also consider that you can change your eating for four or five days and you'll completely change your microbiome. So it sort of shows to me that it's more about what you eat, the environment you're in, the lifestyle that really matters. But there's a lot of research that has found nearly 46 million bacterial genes, um, wow. about 24 million in the mouth microbiome and 22 million in the gut microbiome. And the team estimated that the total number of genes in the collective human microbiome could be around 232 million. But what we also have to remember, is if you read things by Dr. Joe Dispenza and people oh, like yes. that, yeah. he says, um, yeah, genes are one thing, but environment is much more important. You know, we all know I've got the type 1 diabetes gene, I've got the celiac gene, but I don't suffer from either of those. Um, yeah, I think it's similar to me. I have, like, I think in my family, there is diabetes, but I don't have it as well. Because I, like for me, I actually don't drink soft drinks 
very seldom like in a year i'll probably just drink a couple <laughs> that's me yeah. um when you when, when i was younger of course you tend to drink it a bit more but ever since i think the past 15 years it's very seldom i'll drink it only when yeah. i'm forced to <laughs> to drink you know, it but very seldom so good, Anna. that's so good i see healthy sports people here and they stop for a coffee break when they're out on a, and they'll go out for 60 to 100 kilometer bike rides here. And they stop in a cafe and they'll either have really strong coffee because we're in Spain. So, yes, the coffee is really strong. <laughs> or they'll have a Coke or a Diet Coke. And I'm like, do you know what's in that Coke? Do you know how yeah. awful the ingredients yeah. are? Oh, we only have one a day. Okay. But that one yeah. a day is killing off so many of the good microbes in your gut. So you're absolutely right. Drinking soft, you know, soft drinks. That's ca yeah. right. This caffeine as well. Like it's actually spikes the yeah. caffeine. Um, yeah. But I try and yeah. stay out of it, you know. Yeah. Maybe twice Even a year. That would be the maximum. Which yeah. Is yeah. And that's great. <laughs> that's, that's so good. You know, the little um, innocent smoothies. The little tiny bottles you can buy, they have more sugar in than a Coke. And a, and the bottles of Coke you get now have about 16 teaspoons of sugar in. <laughs> Break it down. It's enough. So it's really, really not good. <laughs> and it also affects your gut microbiome. I would say like too much sweet as well. It affects it. Oh, yeah. And you feel sluggish, I think. I feel like if I drink too much of those, I... I feel, feel sluggish during the whole day. I don't know. I think it has a big effect. Yeah. I mean, the best thing to drink is good old water. Yeah, water, and, you know, yeah. If you, don't, if you don't like water, if anyone listening doesn't, they could get oranges, lemons, and limes, slice cucumber. them. Cucumber. Yeah, cucumber. Yeah, cucumber and rosemary is lovely. Yeah. Mint, fresh mint. But make little ice cubes with fresh fruit in. Yeah. And then take a couple out and pop it into your water. And it changes the flavor and makes it more palatable for those who haven't yet got themselves liking and loving water like, like some of us do. Yeah. Um, uh, you also mentioned about leaky gut. Um, and I think, yes. you know, I always get confused what, it's, what it is. So can you tell me more about that and how does it affect our health if you have a leaky gut? Okay. So I'm going to give you an analogy for um, leaky gut to explain it to people because it's quite a difficult one to explain. If you imagine that you've got your bin in your kitchen and you have a black bin liner in it and someone has put some sort of food in there that's rotted and there's all juices coming out of that food and is in the bottom of your bin. And when you go to empty it, you pick the bin bag out of the bin mm -hmm. and there's dribbles of these Yes. Liquid on <laughs> not nice well let's just think of the contents of that bin bag being the contents of your stomach the food that you're eating and the liquid the, uh, the actual bin bag itself is your gut lining when you eat certain foods that are not good for you or your particular body doesn't like them and it ferments in a way in your gut the, the, the badness, the toxins are leaking through your gut lining and they're going into your bloodstream and they're making you ill. Um, if you suffer from some autoimmune conditions, as I said before, I have Hashimoto's, mm -hmm. which I have, you know, completely managed 100%. Um, it's my own, um, it's my own immune system attacking my thyroid. So it's like, and this is caused by leaky gut. So when I discovered this, I went out of my way to work with a nutritional therapist to heal my gut as much as I could. To heal your gut, people recommend things like bone broth. I, you don't like, you know, <laughs> no, that's not for me. But you, you can make water-based kefir. You can have fermented kefir. foods, like kimchi. And kimchi, yeah. Yummy gorgeous and they're all really really good to help heal your gut um so yeah it's it, it's it's not a very pleasant sounding thing <laughs> yeah um yeah definitely i would say like speak to um a nutritionist as well like especially if you think you have got a leaky gut because like you said everyone it has it's in very individual so it can be different for everyone and some food you might not agree with or you don't want it um you know, you don't like it. So there might be other alternatives for, for the types of food that you can 
Yeah. yeah. And you can get lovely greens powders now. I mean, I take um, the Arbonne protocol every day and we have greens, which has 36 different fruits and vegetables in. I take a collagen supplement because, again, collagen isn't just about your skin. It's about all of the things going on in your body. And I take a pre and probiotic as well. And they're all really, really good for the gut. Yeah. Um, I know this is kind of controversial in a way as well. Do you think? There is um, a link or there research about the gut microbiome and cancer risk because like like what's coming out at the moment is that more and more people maybe it's because there's better screening um, is getting cancer. I think it's one out of three or one out of two. I can remember now. Um, it's one in but, two now. What? Yeah. So yeah. so do you think there there is a relationship between it? Um, because there's just so many people are having cancer diagnosis. Yeah, it's what's more alarming is that the number of people under 50 worldwide are being diagnosed with cancer, and it's risen by nearly 80% in three decades, <laughs> according to a recent yeah. study. Global cases of early onset cancer increased from 1.82 million in 1990 to 3.26 million in 2019. Um, and cancer deaths of adults in their 40s 30s or younger grew by 27 percent well that's quite high that's very high. I mean that's shocking isn't it it's awful so they are doing more and more research it's still very early days but they are already saying diets high in ultra processed food red meat salt and low in fruits vegetables all the lovely plant-based um ingredients I mean things like you know lentils and chickpeas mm -hmm. your pulse all those a beautiful fiber feed your microbiome amazingly well. They're also saying that in the under 50s, alcohol consumption, tobacco use, they're the main risk factors that are underlying most of the common cancers in the under 50s. Physical inactivity, excess weight, high blood sugar. High all blood sugar, yeah. <laughs> I know like yeah. sugar definitely is for, it does have like a big cancer risk if you eat too much sugar yeah, huge cancer risk but there are there's more and more research being undertaken because they are starting to say people need to look after the microbiome more it's most definitely linked to cancer rates so we need to watch the space really we need to nurture our microbiome but yeah definitely they're saying um that there's there is a link and there they need to do a lot more research but it's almost certainly contributing to this. And when you think about the fact that your microbiome affects obesity and so many cancers are linked to obesity, then um, it, yeah, it, if constipation, having all waste matter and toxins in your gut is got to be, I mean, that the rates of bowel cancer in the under 50s is really, okay. really skyrocketed. And I think that's so, so linked to what's going so, on in the gut. So telling, yeah. yeah. So um, I think, um, what else? So I think um, this is my last question for you. If you can give three tips for listeners and viewers, what would they be to yeah. improve their gut health? <laughs> yeah, well, I'd love to. I think the number one is definitely aim for a variety of 30 different um, plant-based ingredients a week and 10 a day. Those are really key. Um, have Look after your mind because, you know, there is this link between the mind and the gut. So you might have a bad gut and then you'll, you'll feel depressed. Well, like we both know that if you eat unhealthily or you drink the wrong drinks, you, don't, you just don't feel right and you can't focus the next day. But the same thing happens um, in the opposite way around. So people who are depressed, will eat the wrong things, and then they'll just make that, the gotcha. magnify, make it worse. So I think look after your mind, which is the meditations, it's going out in nature, it's exercising. And then the third one, I would say, definitely look at your sleep patterns and try and make sure that you're sleeping properly. But I do have a gut health checklist. So oh, in cool. Can you, is that in the... Yeah, I'll probably it, post it in the link so they can yeah. contact you as well. Yeah. yeah. And for anyone who gets that, it's very basic, but you'll then get a series of follow-up emails that go into the science behind each of the recommendations I've made. 
so that you understand why I've made that recommendation of something to improve. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll do that checklist. <laughs> I'll get my husband to do that as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, husbands are quite hard to control sometimes yeah. <laughs> they? with their diets. And... <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes. So, yeah, okay, cool. Uh, but don't forget to um, let us know about the link so people can have a look at the look yeah. at the checklist because I think it's going to be useful for quite a for quite a lot of them um so yeah thank you fantastic thank you thank yeah, you thank you. Yeah, thank if you, anyone yeah. wants to contact me I'm very happy to just do a you know a free chat with people to get them onto the right path thank you so much um so everyone uh, that's us for today and uh, do like subscribe Share this episode and see you again in two weeks' time. Bye. Thank you, Anna. Bye. Bye.